Welcome to this introduction to Paradigm Elements for ASL. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to integrate a simple choice experiment with your ASL eye tracker. When we're done, the experiment will present a nine-point calibration screen, start and stop eye data recording, send XDAT markers to mark the onset of stimuli and responses, and detect gazes in two areas of interest. If you are following along with your own copy of Paradigm, please make sure you've upgraded to Paradigm Elements for ASL version 1.6 which is freely available at our website, ParadigmExperiments.com. I'd like to note that this tutorial assumes a basic knowledge of Paradigm. If you've never used Paradigm before, I recommend you watch the Getting Started video tutorial first, or work through the Getting Started guide available on the support page of our website. All right, let's get started. After you've installed Paradigm Elements for ASL, you'll notice that a new iTrack 6 toolbox has been added. This new toolbox contains all the ASL eye tracker commands you can add to your experiment. ASL elements are always added to the commands area of a paradigm event. You should also notice that a new ASL calibration event has been added to the events toolbox. You'll use this new event to present calibration sequences during your experiment. First, let's configure the port device we're going to use to send XDAT markers to our ASL system. Paradigm can use either a parallel port or a network port to send XDATs to your eye tracker. We're going to use the network port, so let's open the device manager and enable the network port device. The default port name and number is typically correct, but you should check with your system administrator to make sure the name matches that of your ASL computer. You can also specify an IP address if a name is not working or available. The port number should always stay the same. Now that we have our port enabled, let's add the first ASL element, the Begin Session element. Begin Session is typically added to the Experiments command area, which you can access by clicking on top of the event sequence. To add the Begin Session element, Drag it from the toolbox. Begin session initializes communication with your ASL eye tracker and must be added to every experiment that integrates with an ASL. We are using the network port, so I'll select network port from the XDAT port type and leave the port name network port 1. I'll also leave the serial out port enabled because we are going to be performing AOI detection during this experiment, which requires the serial out port. If you are unsure if you have the serial out port connected to your system, please contact ASL for assistance. The default settings are usually correct. Now that we have our experiment communicating with our ASL system, let's add a calibration event to the beginning of the experiment. Paradigm's ASL calibration event can present a 2, 5, or 9-point calibration sequence, as well as infant calibrations that use images or movies as calibration points. Paradigm's calibration event supports two types of calibration, standard and infant. You can specify the type you'd like to use in the calibration event's property grid. If you select the infant type, You'll see the calibration points change on the designer surface. You can specify a movie or image for each point by clicking on it and changing the target file name property to either an image or movie file name. To specify the number of targets, change the number of targets property. We're going to use the standard 9-point calibration for this experiment. When the experiment is run, you'll be able to use the arrow keys on your Paradigm computer to change the current target. Or, if you select Auto Advance, you can change them using the calibration dialog on your ASL iTrack 6 computer. Auto Advance requires a serial out port connection. To start and stop eye data recording, use the Start Recording and Stop Recording elements. 
We're going to add a start recording element to the fixation event to start recording data at the beginning of each trial. So we'll drag the start recording element into the fixation events commands area. The default settings are typically correct. Next we'll add a stop recording element to the feedback event. This will stop iData recording at the end of each stimulus presentation. You'll typically want to start and stop recording this way because it will cut down on the size of the data file you'll have to analyze, and if you are using ASL results, it will also allow you to easily segment your data. Next, we'll use the send marker element to send an xstat marker at the onset of each stimulus. To do that, we'll add a send marker element to the choice events command area. We'll leave the xstat marker value for now, as we are going to change that with each trial using a connection. An interesting thing to note here is the onset time property. This allows you to specify at what point during this event the xstat marker should be sent. The default is same as event, which means the xstat will be synchronized with the stimulus onset. However, you could specify a value of 100 milliseconds, for example. This would mean Paradigm would send the xstat 100 milliseconds after the stimulus onset. This allows you to send markers that need to occur during a long stimulus presentation, such as a video or audio file. We want to synchronize the xstat with the stimulus onset time, so we'll leave the default. You can also add multiple send marker elements to a single event, like so. This allows you to send multiple xstat markers during a single stimulus. When you combine this with the onset time property, you can send multiple xstats at different points during any stimulus. Now let's go to the trial table and specify a unique xstat for each trial. If you look at the listed properties for the choice event, you'll see that the send marker element is now listed under the ASLI track 6 category. We want to make a connection between the marker property and a column in this trial table that holds a unique xstat for each trial. Let's first add a column of xstats. Now that we have our column of xstats, let's make the connection by dragging the marker property of the send marker element onto the column. You can click on it to make sure the right column has been connected. The send marker element will now send a unique xstat for each stimulus in this block of trials. Next, we'll use the area of interest element to mark fixations on the two images that are presented by the choice event. I'll drag the area of interest element into the commands area, and a serious looking dialog box will pop up. This is where we'll define the location and size of each AOI. We'll also be able to specify an xstat for each AOI that will be sent when Paradigm detects a fixation. You can also specify a minimum fixation that will end the event. I'll add two AOIs, one for each image, and assign a unique xstat to each one. Now I'll specify the location and size of each AOI. Our AOIs are going to be the same size as our images, so we can use the size and location properties in the image elements property grid. AOIs also have a unique feature that allows you to attach an AOI to an image element. Attaching an AOI changes its location reference point to be relative to the top left hand corner of the image instead of the top left hand corner of the screen. 
So if you are using the entire image as we are, you only need to know the size of the image. Paradigm will figure out the location for you. This feature also allows you to change the screen resolution of your experiment and the location of your images without having to respecify the AOI location. So I'll attach the right AOI to the right image element, keep the X and Y location as zero, and use the width and height from the property grid. I'll do the same thing for the left AOI. Now we specified static X stats for each AOI, but we can also change them for each stimulus, which is fairly typical. To do that, we'll add two columns to the trial table. One for the left image AOI, and one for the right image AOI. We'll then add unique XStat markers for each AOI, and then create a connection between the XStat marker properties of the right AOI and left AOI and these two columns. So now we'll see a unique set of XStats appear for each trial's detected fixations. Also note that you can change the location and size of the AOI for each trial using connections as well. So that allows you to create dynamic AOIs that vary with each trial. So that just about does it for our experiment. We've added a nine-point calibration, controlled eye data recording, marked the onset of each stimulus, and marked fixations to our two images. All without writing any script. Thank you for watching. If you need further assistance, please consult the Paradigm Elements for ASL help files, which are available in the Paradigm help menu. Or you can send us your question using the Ask Us a Question form in the support page of our website at ParadigmExperiments.com. Thank you for choosing Paradigm, and I hope your study goes well. Take care.